All right, thank you everybody for being here. I'm excited to tell you about uh, the work that I've been doing in my lab, investigating CD8 T cell immunity in the AIDS brain um, in response to a respiratory coronavirus infection and particularly in um, the context of cognitive impairment. So we've known for a long time that um, advanced age impacts the severity of viral infections. Uh, viral infections occur in all age groups, but the most severe outcomes disproportionately affect those who are over the age of 60. Um, over the age of 60. Um, we've seen this uh, previously. My work has been on the West Nile virus, neuroinvasive disease, and then of course more recently with the coronavirus outbreak. And so we want to understand how age impacts the antiviral immune response um, in the central nervous system. Uh, previously, we looked at West Nile virus and that was published a couple of years ago. And then more recently, what I'm gonna tell you about today was using um, a mouse coronavirus, MHV, which has been posted to BioArchive um, and is currently in revision for publication. So we know that aging broadly affects the immune system. So inflammation is this term that we use to denote this highly inflammatory environment. Um, in particular, we see increased CD8 T cells, but we see a reduction in the naive T cell pool, as well as a reduction in T cell receptor diversity, which we think impacts the ability to uh, respond to new challenges. And so my lab is interested in understanding how that affects the antiviral immune response in the brain and how it might affect uh, post-infectious cognitive recovery. And so in order to study this, uh, my lab uh, has established this model in uh, this mouse model using MHVA59 and we uh, inoculate intranasally um, eight week or 18 month old C57 black six male mice with 10 to the third plaque forming units, so 10 to the third uh, infectious units, um, or with HBSS. And then we watch these mice over a period of 30 days. This model was really um, established by Dr. Katie Reagan in my lab, who's a postdoc who uh, left recently. But using this model, we showed that uh, age mice are more susceptible to lethal viral infection, which was not surprising. They also, um, age mice experience more severe disease course, so greater weight loss, as well as um, higher clinical scores that we can measure. And so we wanted to understand how this correlated, particularly with the um, cellular immune response in the brain. So we did this by flow cytometry, looking at uh, the CD4 and the CD8 T cells in the brain. So notably, under normal conditions, we have very few to no T cells in the brain, but um, during infection, we see this recruitment of these T cells to the brain. So here we're looking at 12 days post-infection and at 30 days post-infection, we see that aged mice have higher uh, levels of these CD8 T cells in the brain, um, both at 12 and 30 days post-infection. And then we also investigated in the lungs, where is the kind of primary source of infection, as well as cervical lymph nodes, media spinal lymph nodes, and the spleen. You see these higher levels of T cells kind of across the board in these aged mice. However, when we looked at the viral specificity of these T cells, we saw that a decreased percentage of these T cells in the aged mice are um, specific to this MHV virus that we're infecting them with. Uh, both at, again, both at 12 and 30 days post-infection. And so this is suggesting to us that we have this influx of T cells to the brain, but a lower percentage of them in aged mice are specific to the virus and contributing to that clearing the virus. And so we wanted to understand how that might uh, play out in, uh, in a spatial learning model. So we have previously seen that in our West Nile model, uh, post-infectious mice have these cognitive deficits. Um, and so we've tested that using the Barnes maze that we're kind of depicting here. It's basically a circular table that you put a mouse in the middle here, and then you test them twice each day for five consecutive days. Um, and this target hole is put in the same location every day, and they eventually learn where this target hole is. This is basically just kind of a, a hidey box that the mouse can go in to um, escape this kind of anxiety uh, causing tests that we have them on. And we're doing this at day 25 to day 29 post-infection. So that's about two weeks after virus has cleared from the brain. 
And so um, during this in fact, sorry, during this test, uh, we test them twice each day for five consecutive days. So that's what we're seeing here. Um, the black dotted line is our mock infected adult mice, and the black solid line is our um, our MHB infected adult mice. And so you can see that both groups of mice um, improve over that five day time course. We really don't see a significant difference between those mock versus infected groups though. Um, when we look at our mock infected age mice, which is this red dotted line, um, they do improve over that five day period, but there's a little bit of a bump here on that day too. However, when we look at this uh, infected age group, uh, the line is this red solid line, the line is really totally shifted upward, suggesting a significant uh, spatial learning deficit in the in these mice. And so we can collapse this down uh, basically to one data point using this latency, or sorry, this area under the curve that we've normalized the mock. So it's basically taking this kind of bump that we see in these aged mice, uh, normalizing to that effect. But again, we see and each of these dots here represents a single mouse that we've tested on this paradigm. We see a significant increase uh, in latency in these adult mites or these aged mites post infection. Um, and it's particularly on days two, three, and four that we see this, uh, this cognitive decline. And so we wanted to understand the cellular mechanism leading to this effect. And so um, in our West Nile model, we typically have seen that this, or we've seen that this is due to microglial mediated synapse elimination, uh, basically impairing this. Um, impairing the, the, the communication between neurons. And demyelination is also known to occur in these MHC models. However, we saw no evidence of either of those things happening in our system. Rather, we saw evidence of neuronal death, particularly in the hippocampus, which we know is important for uh, spatial learning that I, I just talked about. And so here I'm showing you, um, these are eight week old mice and then 18 month old, uh, particularly in the CA3 region of the hippocampus that we've seen. Um, in blue is DAPI, in green is new N, which is our neuronal nuclei, and then in red uh, is our tunnel staining, which is indicative of uh, apoptosis. And so we've quantified them each individually. So here's our new N staining and our tunnel staining, and then our co-localization um, using Pearson correlation coefficient and Mander's coefficient. And what we see is that particularly at um, in our mock infected aged animals, we see a little bit of elevated tunnel staining, but at 12 days, we see it elevated in both our 18 month and our eight week old animals. And we can see that co-localization is being highlighted by these arrows in each of these groups. And so uh, we see that elevated at this acute time frame for both ages, and then it seems to recover in both age groups, although it remains a little bit elevated in, these, um, in the age group. And so this suggesting that we're having this, uh, this cognitive decline is likely mediated by this neuronal death within this uh, trisynaptic circuit that we know is important for spatial learning. And so we wanted to understand kind of the cellular mechanism causing this neuronal apoptosis. And so we established a co-culture system in which we took primary neurons from mice and we left them um, either uninfected or we infected them with MHBA59. And so we've been, we did that on its own. Um, again, we're staying with new N in green and tunnel is in red. Um, and then co-localization is highlighted in this yellow by these um, arrows. Um, the, uh, the virus on its own didn't really seem to kill the neuron. However, when we co-cultured them with CD8 T cells that had been isolated from MHB infected mice at seven days post-infection, now we see this much um, stronger co-localization in which we're seeing neuronal death, suggesting that the virus on its own didn't kill our neurons, but the T cells from these infected mice did. And so we wanted to know whether this was an antigen specific response or um, antigen independent. And so we again took our co-culture system of uninfected neurons or infected neurons and cultured them um, either alone or co-cultured them with um, naive CD8 T cells. So these are from um, an uninfected mouse or T cells that had been bulk stimulated with PMA and ionomycin. And then again, we're staining with new N and tunnel. Uh, and I think we can appreciate that the PMA and ionomycin uh, bulk stimulated T cells uh, cause reduced 
neuronal nuclei staining and increased tunnel staining colocalization. So this is suggesting to us that um, it's not necessarily an antigen-specific response, it's more just these activated T cells are likely causing this neuronal death phenotype. And so we think that's important in that age group in particular, which had that um, infiltration of those T cells that were not necessarily antigen-specific or not um, specific to our virus. And so um, with that, just my conclusions that we think that viral infections are causing uh, death to these neurons via this CD8 T cell response. And we're trying to understand more about this uh, mechanism mediating this response. We're also interested in the progression of effector T cells in the memory T cells um, and what factors may be uh, influencing that during aging, and then how viral infections or T cells may promote AD related pathology, including tau pathology, as well as genotoxic stress. And so with that, um, I'd like to thank the people who uh, did this work, particularly Katie Reagan. Um, and if you're interested, here's that link to that bio archive submission.